Hi everyone, this is Josh. I wanted to make a video explaining sort of how to solve one of the more instructive but also tricky positions in the endgame simulator. Um, and that's this queen versus rook situation. Now, getting to this position where the king is sort of in the corner with the rook nearby, forcing that from the perspective of the queen can be quite difficult, and um, that will be covered later. But as far as solving this position, I think it's instructive in a number of ways. So what I'm going to do is open up an analysis board and sort of show you the main ideas for how to win this position. And then I'm going to go back to the simulator and give you an example of solving it. So why don't we start with the analysis board? So let me open up chess base. Okay, so we have this position, sorry. Um, and this is the starting position. Um, it's white to move. And the key factor here is that the black king is in the corner and the rook is nearby. Now, as long as the rook is nearby, it's going to be hard to sort of manipulate our queen in a way to win the rook. So our goal is going to be to force this rook to, to move far away from the king, and then once it's far away, we're going to have a series of checks that will either force mate or pick up the rook. Um, so the best way to start this is to sort of put the put black into a position in Zugzwang, where he can't move, otherwise he'll be sort of lost. So the, I think the best way to do that is to start with a check, queen d1. Um, and so obviously black has two replies, either king h2 or rook g1. Let's look at rook g1 first. Um, so black interposes with rook, and again, we're going to put black into a position where he has to move the rook far away. So the key idea here, um, queen c2 can win, um, queen e2 can win. I think the most instructive one is queen d2, uh, if only because it controls sort of on e2, see, when the queen's on d2, it controls this g5 square, which means the rook can't come there. When it's on e2, it doesn't really control some meaningful square on this file, so d2 and c2 are better. Um, d2 is slightly better than c2. Um, but either way, the idea is the same, which is that now it's black's move. The king can't move, so the rook has to move. The point is that the rook has to go somewhere fairly far away from the king, and then we're going to maneuver and pick it up. So the rook can't go here, because we take it. If it comes here, the king takes it. If it comes here, the king takes it can't come here because the queen takes it, so that only leaves G, rook g6, rook g7, rook g8, and then along the a file, um, rook f1, a move like this, not going to work, um, if only because something like this is probably going to force me, um, you know, a position like this and, and, and black is mated. Um, so rook f1 doesn't work. Um, now these moves are so oddly just rook b1 and rook a1. Um, oh, sorry, none of these work because of queen g7 mate. So if it comes here, mate. Um, so that the rook can the rook can only go along the g file. So we're going to look at each option in turn. Um, perhaps the most obvious is if rook g7, we have a simple fork. The queen comes here, queen h6. The king moves, we pick up the rook. So g7's out. So that leaves just rook g6 or rook g8. Um, rook g6, again, we're going to sort of come up with a way to check that picks up this rook, and it turns out to be pretty easy. We play queen c1. Now, if the rook comes back, the idea, the reason it's been nice to be on this diagonal is that if the rook comes back to g1, if you look at the solution, queen h6 actually turns out to be mate. So he can't interpose with the rook after we check here. So rook g6, queen c1, can't interpose with the rook because of the mate, and that's going to be a common theme here, is exploiting these diagonals. So the king has to come to h2, and now, again, we fork and pick up the rook, queen c2. The rook can't interpose because we take it. King moves, we're going to take this rook. So if g6, again, we set up these forks where we force the king with queen c1 either to walk into this fork or to be mated if he interposes. So that's why rook g7 doesn't work. So we've seen how g6 doesn't work. You see how g7 doesn't work now, let's look at rook g8. So this is the farthest point, you know, this king and rook can be apart from this starting position. And so the idea here is that we're going to maneuver our queen to a position where we can check and pick up this rook. So again, you start with the idea of queen c1. And we've looked at why rook g1 loses and to queen h6 mate. So king h2 is forced. And now the key idea is that we're going to again check the queen and reposition the queen and, and exploit... You know, we can either get the queen here with check and pick up the rook, or get the queen here with check. So we're going to play queen c2. And again, the reason we've come to c2 instead of b2 or d2 is that we want to be able to man manipulate, move, maneuver to this square. So, for example, if the king comes to h1, queen h7 picks up the rook. 
So after queen c2 check, because we stay on this diagonal, the king cannot stay on the h-file because queen, c, queen h7 will pick up the rook. So the king has to come to g1. That's forced. Um, and now, what we do is we force the king back to the h-file. Queen b1 check. Look, the king has nowhere to go but h2. Bam, we pick up the rook. So the whole idea was, after queen d1, rook g1, queen d2, we're forcing the black rook to go to the farthest away square from the king to try to survive rook g8. And now we're going to maneuver our queen in such a way that we force black to be forked on, h, on h7. Queen c1, king h2, queen c2, and now we know that he can't stay on the h-file because of the fork. King g1, and now we stay on this diagonal and we come to b1, and now we have the winning fork, h2. We come and fork, and actually we can also fork and pick up the rook this way with a2. So we, we manipulate the diagonal as well. So again, the theme is we force the black rook and king to separate, and once they're far enough away, a series of checks will pick them up. So, we started the first move, this was queen d1, and we looked at why rook g1 loses in all lines. So the only other move is king h2. Now again, keep in mind that our primary goal is to force the black rook far away from the king. The only way to do that is, if we move the queen almost anywhere, we're faced with this, you know, a move like rook g3 check, um, and we're not forcing them apart. So, we want to prevent that from happening. The key move that puts black in Zugzwang is queen e1. The rook can't check on g3, because we'll take it. The rook can't move anywhere. The king can't really move anywhere. And now the black rook is going to have to move far away from the king, and we're going to win it through a similar maneuver. So, let's think about our possibilities. First, let's sort of think about the king moves. The only king move I see is this one, king h3, and then the simple queen f1, there's a pin, as soon as he moves, we're going to take the rook. Um, that would probably be the fastest way to win. So after queen e1, the king can't move. So what can't rook moves do? If the rook comes, he, the rook can come, let's do the g-file first, rook g1. That's a possibility. Now that seems annoying, but if you notice, again, we have these mate ideas along the h-file where we move the queen back and forth. Queen h4 is mate. It's kind of a cute mate, too. Um, so rook g1 doesn't work. Rook can't stay on g2. Rook g3, we take it. Rook g4, the king takes it. So the first move we look at is rook g5. Now why doesn't rook g5 work? Again, note the forks. Queen h4, picking up the rook. So rook g5 doesn't work. Um, rook, rook g6... We're going to come back to, but let me just quickly say, rook g6 is a possibility. Now, rook g7, quickly, again, do you see the fork? You should always be suspicious when the king and rook are on the same color. Queen e5 picks up the rook. So, rook g7 doesn't work. So, pretty much on the g-file, the only tricky ones are rook g6 or rook g8. And I'm going to come back to those. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is along the sort of second rank, you know, this move doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Um, the, on, the only moves that really work are c2, rook c2, rook b2, and rook a2. Um, now, for rook b2, of course, again, we have a fork. So that leaves only two, and you notice the sort of mirror positions, g6, g8, or c2, a2. So let's go in order. Let's first look at rook g6. Again, we're going to do a similar idea where we're going to maneuver the queen to a position where we can pick pick up the rook with a check. Again, whenever we have a position like this, the vulnerable squares are, in this case, h5 and c2. So we're going to play along the h-file. Um, now, the immediate move to the h-file doesn't quite work, but what we can do is play queen e5. Now, as you see, any king move on the h-file falls to king h, queen h5. So, for example, picks up the rook. Same thing with king h3. So the king has to come to g1, and now what you'll notice is we're going to do a similar kind of idea, which is that we're going to force the king back to the h-file and play the fork. Queen c5, check. And now, obviously, if king here, we have mate. So queen c5, the only move is, is back to the h-file. And what happens when he goes back to the h-file? Pick up the rook again. If king h1, queen h5. If king h2, queen h5. So again, you saw the idea... After queen e1, rook g6, we check, and we're setting it up so whenever the king comes to the h-file, we pick up this rook, 
king g1. Now we stay here so that we can stay on this square, queen c5, and that's going to force the king back to the h-file, pick up the rook. This is, these positions are a little bit tricky, but I think you can learn a lot about the geometry of the chessboard and queen maneuvering from studying them. Um, and once you play this a few times in the endgame simulator, it'll make a lot of sense. So we see that we started right, we started the position with queen d1, king h2, and then we played the queen e1 to leave black without any moves, and we've covered why every single square now on the g-file doesn't work except for rook g8. So rook g8. Now what do you think the idea is? Again, we're going to try to maneuver the queen to h7 or a2. And the best way to do this usually is through these sort of slide checks like queen e5 check here. The idea being, again, you know, if something like king h1, we're going we're gonna to pick up the rook through this trick, right? Queen a1, and now the rook can't block on g2 for the same mates we were looking at earlier. Queen, this is a pretty good one too, queen h8 is mate. So the rook can't block king h2, and look at this, they're far enough apart, now we pick it up on this square. Queen a2 check. So after queen e1, rook g8, queen e5, and now the idea is we're going to maneuver to this square. Um, and then, of course, if he comes up, we mate. So king h1, why don't I look at king g1 also. King g1, here, check, comes back, and look, we get to a2. Again, the key th is getting to these squares where we fork, and they're usually there's a2, h, h7 in this case. So now we've seen why every square on the eg file fails. So that just leaves rook c2 and rook a2. Let's look at rook c2. Again, we're going to pick up the rook through some sort of slide checks. Queen e5, king g1, and now, again, we're going to try to get to a square like this. King g7, queen h1, queen h7 picking up the rook unless he interposes, but look, mate. So rook c2, oops, sorry, rook c2, queen e5, king g1, queen g7, now king f1, and now we need to look at the only other possibility, which is queen a1, and that's mating. Right. Mate. So, what we saw again was with rook c2, we're going to use, you know, we get them far apart, then through a series of clever checks, we maneuver to the vulnerable squares. When they're this far apart, it'll be a square like this one, where they sort of intersect on the diagonal and the straight line. King g1, queen g7, and now we're maneuvering the queen to the key square picking up the rook. And again, exploiting the queen's speed to prevent the interposition because we have mate. So now we've seen why after queen e1, rook c2 fails. Again, rook b2 falls to queen check here. The last possibility black can play is rook a2. And now, we're going to win again through a similar idea. We're going to fork the king and rook. So this is the farthest apart they can be like this. And now the last theme, a similar one, which is this queen e5 check move. If king g1... Again, we stay on this diagonal to, to maximize maneuverability, queen d4, king h1, and again we maneuver to a square like this, queen h8. Again, the rook can't, because we're staying on this powerful long diagonal, the rook can't interpose because of mate, king g1, queen g8 check, and we're picking up the rook. Again, queen e5 check, king g1, queen d4. So we saw why king h1 loses to the check here. Similarly, king h2 loses to queen h8 check, king g1 queen g8. Again, forking the king and rook. So it's all about forcing them to separate, maneuvering your queen so you fork the two pieces. So, queen e5 check. We saw why king g1 loses to queen d4. And remember to keep your queen, your queen generally on the longest diagonal as possible. For example, this move, um, it's winning, but it doesn't, it puts the queen on a short diagonal, so it's much slower. So now we can't get to a square like this as efficiently because our queen is sort of on this awkward diagonal. So moving back, queen e5, king g1 doesn't work. So the only other move, if king h3, we have mate. The only other move is king h1. And again, we're going to force the king to the g-file, and we're going to pick up the rook on this square. Queen h8. Again, if rook, rook g, h2, we have queen a1 mate. King g1 forced, and look, queen g8. Checkmate. Or sorry, four king. And then we're going to win. It's checkmate in a couple moves. The king moves, we're taking the rook and mating. So... That's an overview. To, to sort of summarize quickly, I know it's tricky, so you can review the video a few times, practice on the endgame simulator, but you're really going to learn a lot about the geometry of the board. We check, and then force the rook away by putting the kings, limiting all of the possible moves, except for rook moves that put the king and rook far apart, and then we maneuver to win it. 
So now let me show you some sort of real-time practice with the end game simulator. Fired it up. Here's the starting position. And I'm going to show it to you. So say we do this. Okay. This is all what we've seen. And now look. He's got to go there. All the other moves fail. So now we're just going to review. Remember queen e5. G1. And now we talked about we want to stay on these long, nice long diagonals. And now look. We, we want to maneuver to here. Check. Check. Picked up the rook. Check. Checkmate. We win. So like we said, check in here. Now the other nice thing is we can, because the, there's, the position is so simplified, technically we can play the mirror position by coming here and winning this way, and I'll show you that real quick. Now remember that you don't necessarily want to play this move right away, because this is the exact position you want with black to move. But what you notice is here it's white to move, and we would need to triangulate a little bit and lose time. So remember, this is the position we want, but we want black to move. So we're not going to come there right away if we want to go this way. We're going to come here. And remember, he can't interpose because of mate. And now we come down here. And look, we've created sort of a mirror image of the position we had before. And look, he had to bring his king far away. I mean, his rook far away. And we're going to win the exact same way. Check. Check. And look, we're maneuvering to the key square. Once again, we take it. Check. Mate. Oops. Mate. So... As you see, the key ideas are maneuvering to get this position with black to move, forces the king and rook apart, and now we use these slide checks along these very long diagonals to fork the king and rook and win the game. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.